Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. This is Mark Amell. Mark Amell is on our uh, podcasting team, and he has his own podcast on The Advisor, and he focuses on marketing strategies, and he also is an AI developer. And today, he wanted to talk about AI and also talk about customer relations, how it's not just look looking for the right answers, but it's also getting to know your customer and why it's so important to to understand your customer relations and what how it can benefit you in the future and help you with building profits and building your business. So Mark is from DMA Consulting and he is going to tell you a little about himself and he's going to go over some really great information today to help you build your business and help you to elevate to higher levels. So Mark, take it away. Thank you for having me. You're um, welcome. I started out as in the Air Force and I was able to bring the first artificial intelligence program to the military. So I'm an AI programmer, I'm a computer engineer. And back, I did this back in the eighties, but I was, at the same time, Google was growing. So I got to understand group, Google and what they did and why they did it. Uh, Google uses AI to give the answers. They're, Above all, Google's prime directive, if you want to call it that, is to give the right answers. And they use AI to give those answers. Now, there's three parts to AI, as far as I, I see. Um, there's your database with all the information it collects about you. Um, there's a It profiles you to match what other people's decisions and what decisions they made so that they can copy you. What did 10,000 people, your same age, economic status, all that, mm -hmm. as many parameters as they can, what decisions did they make in the same situation? And then the user interface so that you can ask it a question and it interprets the question. A lot of these pieces that I'm seeing uh, from AI, it's just basically a database lookup. Right. They don't compare you to other people in, you know, they don't profile you, they skip that piece out. But to give the best answer, right. you have to do that. One of the reasons I wanted to go into this and explain it is how it works in marketing. If like as a marketing company, I can say I can help any any business with their marketing, but that message is not going to resonate. Um, there's a something called Blue Ocean Marketing, which says you if you have a unique message, a unique offer, then you don't have any competition, which works. You know, if I'm going to do a Google ad but compete against a big company that's spending a million dollars a month, that's not going to help me very much. Right. So the first step is in those three steps about the database, you know, the profile and the user interface, you look at your customers and you profile your customers, your best customers. Maybe it's in the service industry. You like roofers and um, plumbers to work with. You talk in their language. You know, when I was marketing out to accountants, I talked about tax season. I talked about things that were in, important to them in their world as an effort to build that bonding process. Right. Um, before in the old days, you would go to the, down the street to the local store and you talk to the salesperson. And if you like what they were saying, then you continued to listen to them. Right. Nowadays, you have to still build that bonding and yeah. a lot of times you're talking about no like and trust well how are you getting people to know you right are you people to like you well and then you want to buy from them but it, it's a process of telling them that you understand their problem right. what what they're trying to solve and then then you show how that you can solve their problem. And by that time, then you can place your offer because it's all about 
getting them to feel comfortable. You know, I talk to financial planners and I say, do you go in to a meeting and say, okay, everybody bring out your checkbook. I'll tell you what you're doing wrong. You know, nobody's going to trust you to do that. You have yeah. to build that relationship. So getting back to AI, there's so much, you know, ChatGPT spent years building up data until the 21st ended 21. And they structured it all because you have to be able to get information in and out fast. Right. And took off and they were getting millions of dollars thrown at them well mm -hmm. then they started gathering data from everywhere right and that's where they got banned in italy for a while because of privacy data that's why there's been lawsuits because chat gpt pulled the article off a website gave it to you you copy and paste and put it into your website and right you're getting sued for copyright infringements mm. So you want to you want to make sure that you use it as a tool. There's in Google, if you search, it gives you a lot of options. And it also goes down to people also ask. And it gives you ideas. You can ask Chat GPT, you can ask Jasper or any of the other ones for an outline. And I suggest to people that they use it for an outline to help them get a head start and give them some thoughts. Right. But if you're going to copy and paste, it's going to catch up to you. Plus, there's a lot of software now that can tell whether it was AI produced data. Yes. And Google uses those. So as you're trying to build yourself up the ranking in Google and it says, oh, you've got three articles that are written by AI on your website. Right. You lose some major brownie points. It doesn't like that. It considers that cheating. Yes. The other side of it is, I talked to this nice lady out in California, and she was born in Quebec. So her background is, you know, her first language of choice was French, and she's she speaks English well, but mm -hmm. she wanted to get better in her presentation. So she was asking ChatGPT to rewrite her articles. Right be more proper English. And I says, what happens when somebody reads those articles, they like you and you get on a Zoom call and they talk to you and you still have remnants of your French accent. Are they going to think that you're trying to fool them? Right. And you're going to lose credibility. Yeah. So it's better to, better to be your authentic self, not only to continue the conversations with people, but to get, you know, earn that trust. I had, you know, I've had talking with, um, in Zoom, I kind of require people now, you know, maybe it's wrong to come on Zoom and talk to the person. I want to get to know them. Yeah. We've got a great, you know, a great way with knowledge uh, to be able to get to know somebody and actually talk to them face to face face-to-face -face across the country, across the world. Yeah. But they wouldn't come on camera, but they had this logo come up and they had this very attractive Asian girl on there. And I'm like, but the voice didn't even come close to matching. And I'm like, no, you're, you're just trying to, to sell me something. And we're all looking for clues not to get scammed. Yeah. So, being that everybody's got their antennas up to get it not getting scammed, you have to go above and beyond. How are you going to show earn those people's trust? So, and that's those are lessons that we can learn from how AI does it. You know, set your profile up so that people understand you. Look at other people's profiles. Some of the LinkedIn, Alignable, the social sites, if you go on and you don't have a picture there, and if you've got your profile half filled out, you know, people are going to he be hesitant to connect to you. Right. You know, put yourself out there and show show what you're good at. You know, take right. pride in that. You don't have to be good at everything. Just show what you're good at, what your passion is, you know, what makes you, you. I always... Yeah. 
when I retire, I want to retire in the middle of animals. And I always put pictures of my animals on there, you know, so people get to know me. Right. And I figure if they don't like that, that's okay. There's a million other people out there. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can work with. So, you know, be your authentic self. How can you explain that to people? The other, you know, the other thing from AI that I learned is everything is very structured being a programmer. And Mm -hmm. one of my favorite gurus always says, you can't scale a mess. Take a look at your business, where you're headed, what whatever you're doing. Yeah. And if it's messy and you're going, well, it's okay. I've only got five customers. Well, what happens if your marketing works and you get 10 new customers tomorrow? Right. Are you going to not be able to take care of them because you're running in circles? Mm-hmm. And then you're going to lose part of them. You lose part of your reputation. Right. So get, get organized, take it a step by step, you know, appreciate the time. Everybody in the startup, small business knows that they need money and you do certain things, but usually those come back to bite you later on. They do. They do. People that you give a deal to and cheaper, you know, cheaper rate are the ones that often want more. Right. And I think, you know, um, a lot I see, you know, Google is getting very sharp and so are a lot of the other um, major um, uh, uh, websites and browsers. Um, They know when AI is being used and um, it's not. And I think you made a really good point is that people want to see your authentic self. And many times when people are using AI, they come across as somebody completely different you know, uh, the person that they may want to be, but they're not that person. So how are you supposed to trust and do business with somebody that is appearing to be someone they're not? And if you, you know, if you're your authentic self, you will attract other people that want to work with you. Right. You don't have to, you don't have to try to please everybody and you're probably better off not, um, I had, you know, my software business, I have 15 to 20 year customer retention because I take care of them. They like work with me. I like working with them. Yeah. I had a, you know, the hurricane comes, came through Florida. I'm in Florida. And when I lost everything, I had five feet of water, water pouring out of the windows and everything. Oh, wow. I had half a dozen customers say, you know, until you get back on your feet, come stay with me. Oh, I mean, and that's kind of the relationships you build up because they trust you, you trust them. So it's, it's all, it's all about that and not taking those shortcuts. You know, it's funny. I've recently, we've talked a lot about books and the Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. Mm -hmm. And there's one before that called The Science of Getting Rich, Mm -hmm. um, Wallace Waddles. Yes. But it's all, and that was written back in the 30s or 20s or something. But yeah. it, it's all about marketing and building trust before the internet and all this, you know, all this information overwhelm. Comes yeah. Out. And people, if you're looking at how do you want to run your business, you know, it's, it's not about trying to be the fastest one or how you can get away with making a lot more money right? by cheating your customers because exactly. it's not a long-term plan. Right. And I think people have to realize that, you know, people sometimes, you know, they're so into wanting to, to make money, but it's not about you'll make more money by by being ha- developing good relationships and going out of your way to help those people because really word of mouth is the best source of advertisement and and you know that's been proven and if you go out of your way for your customers and if you show your customers your true self and you you're doing the right thing all the time that will pay off in the long run and just like you said the retention will be longer cuz you don't want a customer to come and go, you know, because you, you don't want to have to headhunt your entire life to try to stay above water. You want to have those good 
loyal customers who are willing to invest in you because you're invested in them and you're helping each other. And, you know, those are the things I think, you know, that people need to really focus on, don't you think? No, I, I totally agree. If you look at um, having a one customer that pays you a hundred dollars and he leaves because you don't, you don't follow up and a lot right. of people don't follow up. Um, but if you have that customer for 10 years, that's a hundred dollars times 10, mm -hmm. 10 years as a hundred, you're looking at $10,000 customer. Yeah. So how are you going to take care? So when that person's looking to spend a hundred dollars a month and you look at them as a hundred dollar customer, Instead, think about them as a ten thousand dollar customer. Yeah, you're gonna act differently. Mm -hmm. You know, I've I didn't have to market for twenty years in my software business because right. my residual income paid for my my bills. Right. So it's it's getting there and taking the time to do it right. Mm -hmm. And. But keeping those customers, you know, loyal and happy and the num actually the number two ser um, search engine equation is reviews. So your local search engine, but then your reviews is second. Mm -hmm. And it's not just asking for reviews at the right time. It's responding to a review. If somebody comes in and says, oh, you know, you all were great. Say, thank you. Take the minute to do that. Other people yeah. leave reviews. If somebody gives you a bad review, I saw one that, you know, was not a nice review, but the owner got on and then slammed him and was ranting and raving about how bad mm. a person this was. And I'm mm. like, anybody that reads that review, are they going to want to work with that person? In exactly. Case that so use that as a way to, show more of your true self. Right. Right. You know, and that's so true. You know, the more, more compliant you are, the more understanding you are, the more people are going to want to work with you. Even if you have a bad review, say, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, you know, maybe we could do something, you know, to make this better and blah, 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 you know, because everybody knows that not everybody, you can't have a hundred percent perfect track record. So, yeah. but if you're willing to go the extra length for that one person that maybe isn't 100% happy, it shows your character, your true character. And that's what we've been talking about. And, you know, and, and people will want to take a chance and work with you because they see that most of your reviews are good and you might have one or two that aren't good, but then you want the extra length to try to please that person and make it right. There's a... Uh, um... There's another advantage to this warm up people about getting warm up session, you know, getting to know somebody and them to know you, but you're also getting to know them. Yeah. There's, I won't do a deal, work with anybody that's not a win win. It's got to be a win for both people. Yes. As you're warming up and getting to know that person, you're like, well, you know, maybe I can't help you the way you want to. Right you know, refer them to somebody you don't like or whatever you want to do. But, um, yeah, you know, don't get into it to start with. So you've got a warm up period where you can say, this is not a good fit for me. Right. And, you know, sometimes like when you're struggling, you're starting, it's like, oh, well, that's money, but you know, it, it will burn you. Mm -hmm. It will burn you. It definitely will. And I, like you mentioned before, which is so important, you want those long-term customers. And if you're constantly thinking about making money, those are the people that really don't make the money. It's the people that are focusing on the, on the goals and get into the place that they want to be, I think, and doing the right thing. They get there faster because they are focusing on the positive aspects and the productive, I think, aspects of building a business. What do you think about that? No, I think that's a hundred percent true you know I want to it took me five years to build this marketing company mm -hmm. and I tested each piece because I wasn't willing you know I was an advantage I had the software company paying my bills but I I didn't want to sell or take money for anybody for marketing until I knew it worked 100 percent right 
I wasn't going to take the risk of getting a bad reputation or mm -hmm. take somebody's money and then have to give back to them because it didn't work. Right, right. You know, I could have come up with some things that work and started them out, but then you're asking your customer to to pay for your education, essentially. Right, right. That's very true. That's very true. I think, you know, it's it's really important to have that good customer relationship. I think people need to really focus on that. And people have to realize too that, you know, along the way you are going to have, you know, mo most of the greats had failures before they actually succeeded and not to give up because it, it does take time to build up your business. And I think a lot of problems is that people want results right away. But, you know, I think things take time. And you need one of the main things, like you mentioned, most important is that you need to be your real self and build good customer relations. And that's the step one in being a successful business, I think. Yeah, the um, you know, a successful long term business. You know, I had, I talked to somebody who was a million dollar business and, uh, but their customer retention was only six weeks, which oh, means wow. they had to sell a hundred dollars worth of business every month. Yeah. And then the pandemic came in, they were just out of business. Yeah. A lot of businesses went under during the pandemic. And, you know, I, I feel like, um, you know, it's, uh, People have to really, really, uh, you know, everyone's saying AI is the way of the future. But like you said, I think it's more of an outline than it is, you know, people are relying on AI for everything. Yeah, they think it's going to be the new wave. And I don't think so. I think it's going to be it, it's going to be helpful, just like a lot of other, you know, software is. But I don't think it's going to take over the way people are, are now, you know, saying that it is, you know, because, you know, Google is very strict about always wanting fresh new content. You know, they always want people to be well-educated and have good, strong content. And I don't think AI is going to let that happen. I mean, Google is going to let that happen, you know, and um, even with Amazon, Amazon has gotten very strict in the publishing world. You know, they check for these things, you know, it, it's, um, it's not as easy as people think. You know, there was somebody that told me that says we didn't need Google anymore because Chat GPT knew everything. <laughs> okay. But you know, I see I see AI and our use of AI. It's been around for since the eighties. I see it going the same way that the Google or internet browsers went. You know, Google, Yahoo and Bing were leaders. Mm-hmm. Google sat back, watched to see what was going on and made it better. And they yeah. took over. And next next year when they release the the better version of Google Baird, mm -hmm. their AI product, they have the database. They've been doing profiling for decades. You know, I think that they are going to take over just the same path. And it's going to be another tool just like the internet has become a tool yeah that whenever um so i see it just being a tool and calming down and mm -hmm. i agree with you i think um i don't think people realize that i didn't even know until you had told me because you worked on ai software that it's been around since the 80s you know it the way society has made it it, it it seems like, you know, it gives the impression that it's this fresh new, you know, software that has just recently came out, you know, but it's actually been here since the 80s, which stuns me. That's marketing for you. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that's old is new. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It It's, you had to have a lot of money, big businesses that are using it. And a lot of their statistics, you know, they look at what type of customers, but now it can be called AI because everybody knows what AI is. Right. Or thinks they do. You know, my biggest fear is when it came out so fast is people using it for an excuse not to think. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. 
fortunately, there's a lot of safeguards that will do it. You know, there's stories about lawyers using AI to go in and getting slammed by the judge. And Oh, wow. You know, there's. Yeah, then there was other people have told me they did a they got an AI and they had links at the bottom for references and all like you would if you're creating it. Yes. But links went to different things that were not even related. Oh, wow. Really? <laughs> so, <laughs> That's like, not good. <laughs> no, check your work. Be you. Put your personality into it. Yes. Very true. Very true. And, and, and that's how you become successful is, is being you. Nobody wants, um, repeat, you know, um, imitations, you know, like, like, um, like, you know, so there are so many people who, who claim to be something they're not, you know, pe the people who succeed are the ones who stand out. They're the ones who you are, are unique. And, you know, that's what really makes a product do well. That's what makes a service do well. That's what makes a person do well is their uniqueness. And that's what people want. They want something different that stands out from the rest, I think. Yeah. And an openness to listen to constructive feedback. Yes, definitely. You definitely. know, we had, there was a, I was part, I remember, I think last week, part of a, a management exercise, you know, and you have all these different people giving you input, customers giving you input, you know, don't sit back and say, well, I, I know what's best for you. So this is what we're going to do. You know, listen to what, what their issues is. Yeah. You know? My software business, I drove from Florida up to South Carolina and I was all excited about my online calendar. And mm -hmm. I sat next to the person trying to use it and watching her frustrations, I just kept backing off. And I'm like, I just threw away the whole module. I started over. Oh, wow. Because it wasn't, it wasn't um, efficient. You know, it was too many going around the circles. and right. You know, I've often thought these programmers that make them use it for the day, <laughs> see if they still enjoy what their software is. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I think it's it's important to really get that outside feedback because sometimes we don't when, when we look at products or services that we provide, we don't really we think it's the greatest thing. But until other people use it and be open to their input and their constructive criticism, that's when you really create something really worthwhile yes ma'am and, and you get to know people and their stories you know your story you shared with me earlier I mean it just makes me more impressed with you mm -hmm. so it was you know that type of bonding can't be replaced with AI right exactly exactly now, I know that it's the new year and, you know, I wanted to see if you had some really good tips that you could give people because now it's a time where people are motivated to want to really build their businesses, do well, and they're creating plans. And for people who don't create plans, maybe we can, you know, tell them, you know, or you can give them some tips on how they could start the new year productively. You know, the, the first two tips that we started to talk about in this conversation were, you know, don't rely so much on AI and personalize yourself and, and get to know your client. But when it comes to planning, you know, are there any other tips that you really think that, you know, that you would suggest to people plan in their new year so they could have a successful business? Yeah, go unplug yourself and go to the beach or go to the mountains, whichever you like, take a big sketch pad and write out what your business is going to look like in December. Right. And people get in off on tangents, you know, and that, but everything that you do, does that help you reach that goal? Is that another step to your goal? Right. There's, you know, in uh, a sales funnel, you can say, well, if this person doesn't watch the video, I want to send them another another email saying, okay, well, here's here's to watch it again. But don't go crazy with all these other scenarios off to the side. Get your first, the path of least resistant working yeah. because in the 80-20 rule, that's going to be 80% of the people you want to talk to anyways. Right, exactly. So, Go streamline in. I'm 
I'm donating a hundred of free hours of marketing and business, you know, discussion. So if anybody wants to to sign up, you know, I'd be glad to talk to them about their goals, about what's working for them now, what's not working. You know, that's my goal over 10 years is to help a thousand businesses. So I want to start with a hundred this year and mm -hmm. next 10 years we'll get there. Yeah. That's amazing. That sounds great. And you said that also you're going to be doing a webinar this Friday. Can you tell us a little about that? This Friday, I'm doing a, a marketing webinar that's like a 150,000 um, foot view on marketing and the customer journey going down that path. So I would, uh, if you go to 30waystomarket.com, you can sign up. If you can't make it, uh, we'll send you a recording, but it's best if you're there for questions and interactions. Um, I want to help people realize, you know, what marketing really is so that they can make better decisions. But, you know, maybe that's the engineer for me. I want to know how everything works. But yeah, I think it's not that people get busy. You know, if you're in a, whatever your business is, what you're good at, they don't have time to learn marketing so that they can make a better decision. So I'm trying right. to the shortcut to that. And I think that's so important. And I, you know, I think it's more beneficial when you go to the webinar because you start to interact with all the people there. And a lot of times the light bulbs go off and you learn from each other. So I always, I always encourage people to actually go to the webinar. Just don't listen to the recording unless you, you can't make it. But if you could actually make some time to go to a, a like a live webinar, like Mark's, I would, I would highly suggest it because it, it does make a difference. You know, there's lots of webinars that I've been in that you learn from each other and you really, um, you, you, you gain a lot of knowledge, not just from the person directing the, the, the webinar, but other people also sharing their insight and what they're doing, you know, you, you might say, wow, that, that might work for me, or that's a great idea. And it's really, it's like a teamwork effort. And then you have, you know, someone like Mark, who's guiding it and giving his input and, and it really stirs the pot and you gain a lot of things from these, uh, these webinars. It doesn't feel so, you don't feel so lonely. Yeah. Business owner too. You can say, Hey, wait a minute. These 20 other people have got the same problem that I do. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I think that's the biggest thing is a lot of people feel alone and some people don't want to, you know, go out and ask for the help or they're embarrassed to ask for the help because if they ask for the help, it, it might show that wait, you know, I'm not doing as good as, you know, um, you know, that I want to be, I don't want other people to know that, you know, but uh, on the on the other side, there are so many people going through the same thing because running a business is very difficult. There's a lot of things that you have to hold on your plate. And it's hard for a one business owner to do all that. Even with a team, it's a lot of responsibility. If um for those that come to the webinar, webinar I've got a slide that shows the seven reasons that small businesses fail. Mm -hmm. You know, not having a marketing plan, a business plan, Said, but the last one is you're not able to do what you, why you got into business in the first place, what you enjoy, because you've got all these distractions that you don't like doing. Yeah. Very so true. You can get a team around you and get a plan to take care of that. You're going to enjoy your business a lot more. Yes, that's 100% true. That is so true. I think people have to, you know, uh, having a, a plan, a strategy, really focusing on the important things. So I think people get distracted too, and they focus on things that aren't going to build their business. And it's getting those wasted that, you know, every minute counts. So getting that that time frame and pushing away those things that aren't going to do anything for your business and then just focusing on the important things, I think is important also because so many people get distracted and they start focusing on things, but it's not going to bring an income into the business. It's not going to help grow the business. And then it's being able to decipher what are the things that I really need to just put aside and what things do I really need to focus on, I think, too. What do you think? No, definitely. And I used to teach, I was an adjunct professor for Clemson and I, I used to teach time management. And I tailed people, I says, 
you know, it may sound basic or whatever, but take a notepad, write down what you do all day long. Right. Then decide if you had a productive day or not. Right. Or maybe you should tweak your time and your priorities. Exactly. Exactly. I start out every morning with a list of things and I'm like, okay, what do I feel like working on? What should I work on? What's my priorities? Yes. And then get to work and focus on one thing at a time. I do the same thing and it helps. It, it really does. It, it keeps me in check of the, the main things that I need to get done, the things that I would like to get done, but they're not as important as that first list and just keeping track and just trying to stay on that trajectory and, and not fall off of it and get, you know, get kind of distracted with other things. Yeah. So it's, but there's a lot of things that all of us can do to get our business better. And, you know, the sooner as I'm getting older now, you know, I realize that I'm looking for retirement and how much money I'll need to get through retirement as a business owner. You want to, you want to have yet long-term plan. Yeah. You, you don't want to wake up and say, okay, I'm 65. What am I going to do for retirement now? Right. You know, it's, it's not impossible, but it's a lot harder the older you get and the yeah. years buy a lot faster the older you get too. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I, I'm gonna put all the information. So in, in Mark's uh description, I'll have the the uh URL to sign up for his webinar and I'll also have his website address for DMA dmaworld.com. And both websites are amazing. You know, his, his webinars are amazing and, you know, his website is great and it has all the information you need to get started and to contact Mark. So you could go on your journey and learn how to grow your business. And I think today was a great, um, a great day that, you know, people can start understanding that, you know, AI is not all that we, everybody thinks it is and that you need to really be your own person is what it really comes down to. Is there any other tips or anything that you'd like to advise people before we go? Well, take advantage of my free hour. Yeah, definitely. It's very valuable. You know, Mark has a lot of great knowledge and he's been in the business a very long time. And you know, like, like he said, he was, he was working on the AI software in the eighties. So it, it tells you right there, you know, he's, he's, he's done a lot throughout his years and he has a lot of great knowledge and, you know, we've talked a lot and he has a lot of valuable insight that could help a lot of small businesses and even big businesses become bigger. So take advantage of Mark and all the things that he has to offer. Take a look at his website and Definitely, I would highly recommend going to his webinar this Friday. Sign up for it. And can you tell everybody the link one more time so they, they know? It's 30waystomarket.com. Okay. This has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. I love having Mark. He is an amazing person. He has a lot of knowledge in marketing, and he also is one of our teammates. He has, um, you know, he has a whole... Um, podcast series on SEO strategies, talking about AI, talking about CEO, SEO, and, you know, is it dead? Is it, is it still worth doing? Um, he talks about a lot of different things, things that, you know, have a lot of controversy, things that people are confused about. Well, he unconfuses people and he explains it in very simplistic terms to help people understand what's important and what's not important and what to focus on and what not to focus on. And by using his, his tools and his strategies and his techniques, you could see your business grow really quickly. So I suggest highly that you go onto Mark's site take a look at it, contact him and help, you know, and he'll help you grow and become the business that you always dreamed of becoming. So Mark, thank you so much for being on the show today. I love having you. It's always a pleasure. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to be with talking with you. Oh, you're very welcome. You have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.